Hey everybody, we're gonna go do the yard walk for the upper yard now, the back of the urban homestead. The, you can see through here, pretty much the strawberries at this point in the year, they're done. We've harvested off the last of those. I noticed yesterday that the, uh, the goji berries are just starting to flower. So you see little flowers there. They're starting to branch out, get their flowers. You can see the fruit set starting to happen on the, uh, the gojis, which is always nice because we get a lot of goji berries off just this bush and that bush over there. And you see the raspberries. I staked up the uh, sea berry. Here's an aronia berry. I'm hoping that eventually one of these years, I don't know how many years it takes, that we'll actually get some aronia berries coming off these because they're very good with antioxidants. But you can see the raspberries are starting to spread move around. I've chopped back a lot of the uh, the mint that grows in here to give the raspberries an ability to fully express their growth. The mint was basically just to use as a uh, cover until the raspberries start to get bigger. And of course, you know, I'll let the, I'll keep some of the mint growing through here, but you know, the mint's always easy to chop it off. It regrows so fast. I mean, you can see it's already coming back. So it's just kind of chopped chop and drop good for uh, building up organic matter within your uh, beds but it does if you don't want something that's going to be something you have to battle all the time do not put mint in your gardens because it will run and it will take over so you want to make sure that you don't uh, put it anywhere that you cannot keep it and cut it back because it runs and it gets through everywhere which for me I don't mind that because I like to use a mint for all kinds of purposes. You know, you eat it while you're out here in the yard. If you have an upset stomach, you just grab a couple leaves, you chew it up, eat it, swallow it. It's great for that. You can see the Sunflower Island here. It's really started to take off. And down here, the little uh, variegated wagala. They love having this shade in the afternoons. So this is really helping those grow. Because, I mean, they were kind of getting a little heat stroke from their uh, exposure to the sun. You can see the one back there that used to get a lot of the, the sun, it's died off. But these other ones that have a nice shade in this midday to afternoon, it's really doing nice. So this is really helping out, give those guys their uh, ability to grow. You can see the uh, apricot, looks like it's ready to, to pick, as well as the one over there, our two apricots, this is our second We'll see our third year apricot. So we've got two fruits on it this year. So hopefully next year we're gonna be able to get some more fruit on this. I actually had to stake it back a little bit. Peach trees I've been treating. Looks like I'm beating back the, uh, the fungal molds and stuff on this tree. So I'm keeping it pretty healthy. I think it's gonna be a survivor. And then next year I'll be doing the dormant oil spray. Early and often in the spring and this fall. So you can see the currants are doing pretty good. So you can see, like I'm talking about the mint. I put a little bit of mint over here a few years ago and it really takes over. I don't mind it. I can cut it, chop it, and drop it. I can control it. And then that way the plants around it, the ferns and stuff like that, can really take advantage of that free nutrient that drops down there. But you can see how the mint, mint really just kind of just grows up through everything. If you don't like it, grab onto it. Give it a tug, it comes right out. Lay it down, put it here, let it go. Rocks right back into the earth. There's some more mint that I ripped out the other weekend. Oh, you can see there's one of our dogs up there on the hillside. <laughs> That's Benny the pug. Might as well go over here, show you the apple. Looking nice. Man, this Liberty apple, I just really love this thing. It always has such nice apples, and you never really see any kind of uh, scab or anything on this tree. It's really nice. I mean, so if you're going to get an apple tree, get a Liberty apple. They're a great tree. Okay, the tomatoes. Looks like we got a lot of fruit set coming on here. There's some more that are ready to pick back there. There goes Benny. The one he pees. looking for mama. There's some more that are ready. Looks 
sec, I got my afternoon snack available for this tree, these uh, tomatoes. Upper yard's looking really nice. Blueberries are just starting to turn, as you can see, over there. So we're going to get a lot of blueberries coming off this. This is our almond tree. There's no almonds set on this one yet this year. So I think next year is going to be the first year we'll get almond you know, fruit set on that. Almond nut set, as you call it. Paw paw. Yeah, there's going to be a lot of blueberries we're going to get this year. Before we do our blueberry harvest, I'm going to do a chop and drop on all this comfrey here. That way I can drop that nutrient right into there. I might do that next weekend. That way I can just make sure that all that nutrient's getting sucked up in availability to the uh, blueberries. Bamboo's looking healthy. Let's go down here and look at these tomatoes. You can see the sunflowers are really starting to, these are the tall ones, so they're really starting to top. You know, they're almost at the top of the cages and they're topping the cages over here in some aspects. A lot of nice big tomatoes. We haven't had any more ripe ones up here yet, but that's expected because it's pretty early. It's only, you know, July 14th, so we're only halfway through July. Here in the Pacific Northwest, down south, you're probably getting tons of tomatoes. I mean, you can see we've got squash up here that we haven't been able to get into yet. Lots of squash setting in here. And you can see some of them, they don't always make it, so you want to come through and twist those off. Get those out of there. That way the plant can put its energy into the, the good ones. Just come through and just kind of twist, pop them off, toss them onto the ground. They'll come off real easy. Zucchinis back there. I mean, look at that. We're just not able to keep up at this point. Because we're getting probably at least five or six a day. Nice big sunflowers. Yeah. Got some turn turning here. Got that nice yellow to them. Well, I tell you, sunflowers are some of the most durable things I've ever seen. This thing looks like it's split completely open, yet it's still growing, and it's going to be a sunflower. <laughs> I just, I love gardening. This is the best thing. As you can tell, it looks like I'm a little bit sweaty yet. There's our, uh, some more tomatoes up here, really looking healthy. You can see the Scarlet Runner beans are starting to open up, and I've gotten buzzed a few times being up here this weekend by the hummingbirds, because they're very territorial. They think I'm coming in and invading their food supply. Especially when I get over here and start touching the, uh, the runner beans up above to kind of guide them. They start to kind of get a little territorial. You see the apple tree looking really healthy. There's a lot of apples out there I did not notice that we had on this tree. This is a Granny Smith. So, it's an old family variety, I guess you'd call it. We got the cucumbers down here, they seem to be doing well. Since I put that drip line in I talked about last week, and you can see the little beans are starting to sprout. The bean seed that I put in here. So then we'll have beans growing up here with the cucumbers soon. And I also threw out some hairy vetch. So then we'll get those nice purple flowers from the hairy vetch growing up in here, which will bring in the pollinators to help uh, set the fruit for our cucumbers as well as beans. So you always want to have those companion plants to bring in your native poly pollinators. Pollinators. <laughs> okay, we're back down to the lower yard, so I guess it's time to wrap up. One last shot of the, uh, the apple tree here behind me. All right, I'll talk to you guys again. I'll do an update next, probably for the indoor grow tents. All right, talk to you again. Bye.